One of the most bizarre storylines to start this season has been former top 5 pick and Pistons guard Jaden Ivey. After a promising rookie season, Ivey was a player many believed would be a breakout candidate in his second season. Now, I was a bit skeptical of Ivey taking that leap due to the addition of Asar Thompson, and Jalen Duran is somewhat I projected to take that leap as I'm a bit higher on those two than I am on Ivey. But this season, at least the start of it, has been very odd to me. Ivy has noticed a dip in his production and minutes. But what makes it so bizarre is the fact that he's been significantly more efficient to start this season compared to his rookie season. So despite playing less minutes, Ivy is producing at a similar rate production-wise while significantly improving his efficiency. So what's going on here? That's what I want to talk about in this video. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I'd really appreciate if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the 2024 season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Jade and Ivy. Now, it should be known that Ivy has missed time due to an illness, which has cost him four games at the start of the season. And him having a limited role in his first action back against the Bulls does make sense. However, prior to the time missed, Ivy had been playing really well. Sure, he had a rough debut game in his second season, putting up four points, two rebounds, three assists, three turnovers, and three fouls on 14.3. 066.7 splits and a 242 shooting percentage. But really outside of that game, he's been pretty good. Following that debut to the season, over his next five games prior to missing time with injury, he was averaging 13.4 points per game, 2.6 rebounds per game, and 2.4 assists per game on 54.3-45-88.9 splits and a 67.12 shooting percentage. In fact, he shot at least 50% from the field in 71.4% of the games he's played at the start of this season. Now, let's look at the main reason that I believe is likely contributing to Ivy not getting a ton of minutes, and that's been the guards who have been getting more minutes than him. Marcus Sasser has been one of the best rookies in basketball, averaging 10.2 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, and 3.1 assists per game on 49.4, 43.2, 100 splits, and a 61.42 shooting percentage, providing the great shooting ability to space the four and viable off-ball ability that has been really valuable and something that was expected of him entering the NBA. Alec Burks has also been really good. Now, he's only played five games because of injuries himself, but in those five games, he's averaging 15.2 points per game, 3.2 rebounds per game, and 2.6 assists per game on 43.5, 50, 83.3 splits, and a 67.22 shooting percentage. While he's not been a great two-point shooter, Burks has been one of the best three-point shooters to start the season when he's played, being a reliable floor spacer. But the most interesting one has been Killian Hayes, who's averaging 10.9 points per game, 3.3 rebounds per game, and 4.7 assists per game on 40.2, 32.5, 77.3 splits, and a 49.32 shooting percentage. Now, to give Hayes credit, He's been pretty good recently. After the first five games of the season, he was averaging 6.4 points per game, 2.4 rebounds per game, 3.6 assists per game on 27.3, 23.5, 57.1 splits, and a 34-2 shooting percentage. However, over his last six games, he's averaging 14.7 points per game, 4 rebounds per game, and 5.7 assists per game 
on 48.5, 39.1, 86.7 splits, and a 59.3 true shooting percentage. The reason Hayes has been starting even when he was bad offensively is his defense. He's been a pretty good defensive player in his young career and he's a really good passing playmaker. If he keeps up the way he has been playing over his last six games for the rest of the season, he should at the very least keep the minutes he does. So even though Ivy himself is playing really well in more limited minutes, the other guards on the team are also playing really well. Sasu has a reliable skill set, Bergs has been a great suitor, and Hayes has picked up his offensive play while being a good defensive player and good passer. In a vacuum, it seems like a case of Ivy just being a really good guard on a team with guards playing well. And his defensive flaws are probably what's limiting him in terms of playtime the most, which is a sign that even though the Pistons have had an awful start to the season, they are trying to win. And I think Monty Williams having Ivy come off the bench is a lot because of his defense. And to be honest, Ivy hasn't been great on defense, and I do see that side of it. But here's why I believe Ivy should be getting more opportunity and probably should be starting. And it mainly has to do with the piston suiting and screwing. Or should I say the lack of suiting and screwing. The Pistons aren't a good 3 point suiting team. Sure, they rank 12th in the NBA in 3 point percentage at 36.4%, but they also rank 28th in attempts at 29.7 per game and they also rank 29th in 3-point attempt rate at 33.4%. When you watch the tape, it's very clear the spacing on the Pistons team isn't ideal. While Cade Cunningham is far from a perfect player, he definitely has his own flaws as a finisher and scorer, and he isn't without blame, it's clear the lack of spacing and scoring around him is affecting his efficiency. He's constantly dealing with double teams and help defense, he gets trapped a ton in pick and roll situations, and really outside of, I can't believe I'm saying this, Isaiah Stewart, the Pistons don't have a reliable 3 point suitor in their starting lineup. Asar Thompson has been incredible in just about everything that isn't scoring, but he's still a work in progress as a scorer to say the least. Jalen Duren is a great player on both ends of the floor and brings value on offense, but he isn't a suitor. And while Hayes has picked up his suiting recently, he's had similar hot streaks as a suitor in the past and never has shown anything to suggest that this is sustainable. If you look at the best 3 point suiting lineups for the Pistons, almost all of them have Jaden Ivey in them. Now it's a small sample, but Ivey is averaging 6.2 3 point attempts per game per 75 possessions. And if he can maintain similar levels of efficiency to what he has so far, he would bring value in that starting lineup. On top of that, Ivy would also be a scoring threat that would take some of the pressure off of Cade, because in my opinion, Ivy is the team's second best sock creator behind Cade Cunningham. He's a good rim pressure threat, he's good in secondary creation situations, he can play on and off the ball, he's a good connecting passer, and in theory, he's improving as a suitor. It would do a lot for the Pistons starting lineup. If Ivy can at least get back to his production as a rookie and likely improve on it, be a threat to get 20 plus points in games, and so improvements as a suitor that are legit and not just hot suiting streaks, Cade won't have to deal with as many double teams and help defense. Having a guy in the lineup that is a threat as a scorer means you have to focus on him. In fact, I'll take it a step further. In the 7 games where Ivy and Cade have both played, they averaged just 8.4 minutes per game as a duo in those lineups. But in those 8.4 minutes per game, the Pistons do 46.9% from the field and 46.4% from three. I know the net rating and defensive rating aren't great with that lineup, but there's something here that can be expanded upon. Now only time will tell with all of this. It's still very early in the season, a lot can happen. Maybe Ivy does eventually get the starting job back, maybe he doesn't. Maybe his suiting falls off, maybe it was just a hot start and it wasn't sustainable. Maybe Killian Hayes is just good now, that's a possibility, it's not 
a likely one, but he's a very talented player that went high in the draft for a reason, and he didn't just all of a sudden become bad. There were many factors that led to him not living up to his potential up to this point, and maybe he's just figured it out now. But based off what I've seen, the Pistons lack spacing and offensive creation around Cade Cunningham, and that's been a major problem. Again, Cade isn't without blame himself, but it's also clear on tape defenses focus almost solely on him. I think Ivy should be starting because he would take some of that pressure off of Cade. He's proven to be a talented scorer, even if he isn't perfect by any means. And I think if you have Ivy starting as the second scorer next to Cade, the Pistons will get better. I think if you move Hayes to the sixth man role and he plays around 25 to 26 minutes per game and he proves he can sustain what he's been doing recently, the team overall will be better for it. The spacing around Cade will get better, the team will have more than one option that opposing defenses will have to focus on in terms of offensive creation. Hayes surrounded by suitors like Sasu and Burks off the bench could do wonders for the second unit. I think everyone would benefit from Ivy starting. Only time will tell obviously and we have a lot of season left to play and this video could look foolish in a few weeks. I'm well aware of that but based off what I've seen so far and what the Pistons starting lineup is and their flaws as a team. I think giving Ivy the starting job back would be the best course of action. Alright, that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already? Like, subscribe, hit notification bell, and notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about the Detroit Pistons and Zayden Ivey. Do you think he should be starting? think he should be coming off the bench? Do you think it's the right move? you think it's the wrong move? What are your thoughts on this Pistons young core? How do you think they're going to be long term? Love to hear all of that in the comment section below. But with that being said, have a nice day. I'll see you guys in the next one.